Right, so this is the Historical Commission, uh, May 27th, and let's, let's get started here. Uh, Don is the, going to be the one sharing the documents with us, but for our agenda, let me just check to see if Ellen is trying to check in, because uh, I know she was going to try to join us here. Is but Sam on by phone? Pardon me? Is Sam Blair on today? Uh, I don't see him signed up yet. So that's why I wanted to check my email to see if any others are there yet, so. Um, he might have had trouble finding the link too, I don't know. Yes, and I think we're all uh, kind of. Linkless. Yes. As opposed yeah. to clueless. <laughs> yes, both and perhaps. Okay, I, I don't see anything else here. I'm on kind of a slow connection too, so we will. Um, so if, um, did everybody get a copy of the minutes and um, any, any, uh, any corrections, any amendments uh, from anybody or, do we want to, do you want to bring them up and go through it on the screen? We can okay. do. That means I'm going to have to stop the share. Well, if, any, if anybody wants to do that, so that's. Uh, it's fine with me. I read them. They're, they're fine. Okay. Megan, I made a couple just, I, I put the, I put the year date in it and I made a couple just minor, minor pieces to it, but uh, uh when I sent them out to everybody. So that's the one that we're approving. So, all right. If there's um, no comments, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I make a motion. Yep. Yes. Second. Yeah, third. Second, all third. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any abstentions? Any opposed? Uh, no. Minutes are approved. And um, if we can um, maybe see if we can get those posted on the website at, or, or the city's website at some point in time and we'll, we'll go from there. Um, okay, um, Don, next item on the agenda. Okay, I was looking for the minutes. <laughs> Didn't manage to get them up in time. That's all right. Thank you. So we will go back here. Let me get my camera out of your way. Charles, are you at Money Tech also? Uh, right now I'm at uh, Neshoba Valley Tech photographing softball. Okay. Um, and I just have a little brief window of, are you at Monty Tech? No, it, uh, Nathan from uh, FATV that set this up is out there for graduation. So I wasn't sure if you were there also. Oh yeah, no, uh, one of my coworkers is though. They're having their, their rain day today for their graduation, yeah. Okay, beautiful day. Yeah. Yeah, much better than yesterday. I shot a prom yesterday at Polar Park in Worcester. Oh, those uh, kids. I had friends that had kids at that. Oh, really? It was for uh, St. Saint, Saint Paul's Academy. Yeah. St. Paul's Diocese uh, Catholic School. Um, and it rained like crazy, but they had, it was under a mezzanine, so it worked out. It was beautiful. Good. Uh, so impressed, well. impressed with the park, huh? Well, no, I thought that it was a money a money pit from the get go, <laughs> and uh, the building they delivered was far, far cry from what they promised. Uh, it looks like a, it looks like a mini IKEA from the outside, but uh, somebody else said that that I know. <laughs> yeah, and parking around there is horrendous, and when you do find parking, it was expensive. Um, but Kelly Square is a lot better design than it was a couple of years ago. I'll say that. Yeah, taking all the challenge out of it. I know. 
but I, it's nice that the park is there now that it's built. I just, I would have never approved of it in the first place, all the money that it costs to have it, but it's nice now that it's there. Thanks to our taxpayers' money, so I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, so uh, next thing I have on number two is filling the commission member uh, opening. Um, and I was just looking back through our, our charter ordinances, regulations and so forth. And um, we have historical society, uh, we have uh, architect, couple of architects, um, and um, we're missing uh, someone from real estate. And we had somebody originally from real estate um, that is now off the commission. Um, I know uh, Ellen is, is saying that uh, Lenny might be um, interested in joining. So I just wanted to kind of bring that up. Um, and we should uh, get our next member appointed as a as a priority at, at some time here. So, um, yeah, we might mention that this is we <laughs> the the, re the reasons why we need a uh, real estate person <laughs> um, to to fill the gap because of, we are a district historical commission and. Part of the stipulations stipulation is that there be an architect, a historian, a lawyer, I think, real estate person. What are the other two? A baker, candlestick maker. Yeah. No. Photographer. <laughs> Photographer. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, so both. Um, oh, it was supposed to be a member from the historical society, society. as well. I think was one. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's Megan, um, and and um, Susan was or is is a lawyer representing kind of the law side of it, but uh, she has um, um, not been reappointed and been absent. So we. Um, any discussion on. Uh, where we should maybe go with this uh, from the rest of the commission. Um, I mean, if Lenny wants to join, he has my blessing, that's for sure. Yep. Yeah, he's very knowledgeable. Could really I don't know if that I don't know if that ticks off any of the requirements, but maybe we could get a dispensation from the mayor. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Uh, I think um, no, without, I thought Ellen would probably call me if she couldn't get on, but I could give her a call and, and we could do phone with Ellen again if, if uh, that would be good. So let me give her a call. Okay. Hi, hi, Ellen. It's Keith. Hi, Keith. Um, we are we are zooming on for the historical commission. Oh my gosh! Thank you for calling me. We'll sleep. I'll be on in a minute. Okay. Did you get to connect? Did you get? Why don't we stay on the phone while you're signing on? Because people have been having a little bit of problems I connecting. Do you have the new Zoom connection from the city clerk? Yeah. Okay. Oh, give me a couple minutes. Uh, okay. Wake up. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Give me a call if you have problems. Okay. Um, so let's uh, hold off on number two until Ellen uh, is going to be joining us. And 
Number three, uh, Simon Saw. Um, I think most of you have been in on the kind of conversations with it. Uh, and Michael Steinitz of uh, Mass Historical Commission, I think, uh, replied to everyone about, um, I'd, I'd ask him about uh, perhaps recording uh, the documentation, and he also let us know that the the state does not have any. Do some sign, that thing. Mass you know, does not have any. Um, oh, sorry. No, that's okay. He was just saying that you sent the uh, cheerleading photos. I do. I wasn't oh, okay. leaving. I just. Oh, good. All right. I just wanted to make sure before he like called. Back. Yeah, I think they're at five o'clock. Oh, okay. But if they're if they're ready sooner, I can do that. So I have no idea. Okay. Okay, um, that uh, since um, the developer or Amazon does not is not take does not have any federal or state uh, licenses or is not getting any funding from. Be in that gym picture too. Yeah. Okay, they'll be in the gym. Yeah, yeah I think that we're going to be ready to five. Charles, they'll no start back to the three thirty. Whatever works for you. Let me just. Uh, let me just. Uh, I think that's the time we put it on the schedule. Yeah, Charles, because oh, I, I it helps you get out. Yeah, I wasn't leaving. I was just putting some stuff in my car, and I was going to come back and photograph the softball game. Yeah, it should start soon. I'm but, waiting on Lynn Tech to get in. Where is hey, the? Uh, where are the Charles? For the Charles, mute, 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 mute yourself, Charles. Yeah, I'm on a Zoom. I'm on a Zoom meeting, and I'm trying to figure out how. No, no, I'm trying to figure out how to pause my audio. Or you can do it because you're the administrator of it. Okay, thank you. Not I got it. Audio, though. I think I did. There you go. <laughs> All right. Okay. This is my first Zoom administering, so I'm. I'm uh, it's a nice platform. It's just uh, getting used to. Mm -hmm. uh, so any anyhow, there's there's no um, no reason why they would have to go through Mass Historical Commission, and we do not have a demolition delay. Uh, we we still tentatively have a, a potential of a a walkthrough for uh, for still photography and videography, um, and uh, sometime supposedly early July. Uh, I haven't heard back from um, the developer on this yet. Uh, any, anything beyond the last communication where he said, yes, we could probably do that. Um, one, in, they're in asbestos removal now, so I believe the, the building is fairly closed down. Um, I, I'd ask uh, Tom uh, Swarovski to give me a call. I just wanted to coordinate with him and they're probably one of the lead city agencies working with the developer on this. Um, and Tom did not give me a call back yet this week. I wanted to ask him about if it would be okay if we, as kind of a united front from the city, uh, ask the developer and Amazon if they would perhaps uh, consider uh, keeping part of the building um, in, in their development rather than taking down the whole whole establishment. I believe their new building is going to be much smaller than the total footprint of the existing building. Um, and, you know, it, as time's kind of ticking, it gets harder and harder to ask for something like that. I did talk informally with um, 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 what's his name from uh, Boulder Gallery. Um, <laughs> um, Cap, um, Capadagli. Peter, yeah, Peter, Peter Capadagli, who is the deputy chief or deputy chair of the um, planning board that has heard the system. He's saying that, you know, the developer is certainly coming back and has more reviews before them. Um, and I, you know, one possibility is that, that we, as, as a city, um, uh, Try to persuade them to maybe keep part of the building at least uh, in that, uh, you know, it, it's kind of 
Um, at least as a historical commission, that's one suggestion that I'm making. And, and as far as the rest of you are concerned, uh, uh, I'd like to hear what your thoughts are, or uh, not that I'm going after this just for my own thoughts on it. So, Well, you know, yes, I'm, I'm very much in favor of um, maintaining uh, structures and having uh, them incorporated in whatever new structure is created rather than tearing down everything and starting uh, anew if, if, if possible. And there have been some very creative uh, architectural projects that have incorporated existing historical structures into uh, new structures. And um, it, 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 it's whatever we can do, I think, to preserve the historical heritage of Fitchburg um, is we, we really need to do because there has been so much lost um, over the years. And, and it's just really sad. You know, I, I talked to some of the longtime residents and, you know, they, they, they say, oh, well, I was born down at that, that hospital, but now there's a federal building, there's a post office there. And I say, yeah, why couldn't they have incorporated the hospital into federal, you know, not keep it as a hospital, but keep the structure so people could point rather than say, oh, there's a post office where I was, they could point, that was the building I was born in. I mean, it, it, it's so much an identi identity for the people of the city who were born in the city, born in that hospital. Um, so, my, okay, I'm going off on a tangent here. Yeah, but okay, so you know my have... feelings. I'm, I'm, keep, <laughs> yeah. keep, keep the, if at all possible, keep as much of the original structure. Uh, Charles or Megan, any thoughts on it? I don't think Charles is, I think Charles is out of commission now. <laughs> oh, hi, I'm back. Oh, I am. Um, I'm doing three, I'm doing three things at once and I hate to do that, but um, I know that we don't have that many members on today. So I'm trying to stay on so we have a quorum, but uh, I agree. I missed some of what Keith said, but um, I agree with what Don just said and what little I did hear from you, Keith. And uh, I don't know if you brought it up or not, but um, you had mentioned about getting some photos and stuff. I sent you an email. I don't know if you got it. I, I have time in uh, late June or July and we could do that if you needed some photos. You'd have to find somebody else for a video though, as far as documenting the building. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. okay. um, so um, um, Megan, your thoughts on trying to see if we can at least salvage part of the building or yeah. make an attempt. And I don't know how we do that with, I think unified from various boards and representatives of the city also, but as an advisory uh, commission, I think we could, we could make our thoughts known and see if, if uh, uh, we could try to get a unified front on this, you know, I get even from the mayor if possible. Um, certainly with Tom and, and the planning board seems to have um, certainly a voice in how things are being done and how it's being planned. Uh, I haven't seen the plans themselves, um, but I just talked with Mike O'Hara on it briefly. I, well, I would agree with everyone. Um, I think in addition to writing a letter or going to a meeting, we need to provide some examples. So some of the examples that maybe Don has seen, I know in Worcester, they incorporated some uh, I, I believe the facade of Mechanics Hall, the backside of Mechanics Hall in their new addition, something like that, um, or anything else along that line. Maybe they can keep just a portion of it as, as maybe the entrance into the building or what have you. Yeah, some, okay. something, something along the facade along Intervale or a good portion of it or something like that would... would um, be at least at least a memory of it and yeah. or even you know if they have to 
uh, not use all of the building. They can mothball part of the building and, and use the portion that they do need uh, and partition it off even, something like that. Yeah, um, as long as we can provide some examples, I think that would help the situation, help, help the argument, you know? Okay. Um, can you hear me, Keith? Yes. Keith, can you hear me? Um, yes. no, go you ahead. know, it wouldn't hurt to it wouldn't hurt i don't think to try anyway to just say hey we we would like to you know save as much of this building as we can um you know with the amount of money that this company has amazon that's buying it you know they could do that like as goodwill to our city you know if we if nobody says anything then they just do what they want because nobody said there was any restrictions on the building when they bought it but if they hear from people like us that we're interested in, in it and that it means something to us, who knows, maybe they might, you know, might be like, okay, you know, we want to, we want to make a good mark in the community. Um, maybe this is something we should take a look at before, before we tear it down, you know, and re reincorporate it to make everybody happy. I, I don't know. You, you might be surprised. I don't know. Just to let you know, Charles, um, Amazon didn't buy it. Another developer did, and we'll lease it out to. We'll build a new building, and we'll lease it out to Amazon. Oh, I misunderstood that part. Oh, okay. Well, it's still, <laughs> it's, I still. My sentiment still stands, though. I mean, at least if we say, at least if we make the effort. You know, you never know. I mean, they they probably don't have any idea. You know, they could, they could either care less or don't have any idea uh, that it's significant. You know what I mean? Not everybody looks at a building the way we do. <laughs> <laughs> right um so maybe we educate them and be like hey this was the first windowless factory in the united states of this art deco design blah 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 that's well made and they'll be like oh maybe they'll i don't know maybe it's too late i don't know but yes i agree i don't think it would certainly not hurt to ask okay um so um the best way to um we, let's let's kind of brainstorm for a minute for kind of best way of of, uh, of perhaps presenting as a, a letter from the historical commission to um, to the planning board to the mayor um, uh, We're, we're kind of we're we're advising city agencies, I guess, of of our uh, input to uh, this particular piece. It is uh, documented as a historic building in at least in in our survey information, uh, the information that goes along with it. Um, I did I did let the mayor's office know uh, through Joan David that we were hoping to get a walkthrough. And Joan had mentioned it to the mayor and the mayor would most definitely like to join in the walkthrough if that happens. So I think there is some, uh, some it is certainly the, the mayor's office is interested in it also. Um, who, who should it go to? Uh, to the planning board, to the mayor and to the community development, Tom? I know the planning board has already approved their special permit, so that piece is done. I don't know if the planning board will. Um, well, it probably wouldn't hurt um, for them to know our, our comments on it, I guess. So um, Maybe suggestion is from us as advisory to the city, to the mayor, um, to planning board, to uh, community, or maybe community develop, mayor, community development, then planning board. I'm trying to think of an order. So probably near Ellen. Hang on. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Keith. I, I've had a hard time with the computer. It's finally on. So 
but I, you need to let me come on. Okay. Did you did you click on the link uh, that the, the city clerk, yes. clerk I, it sent I, you? It doesn't show. Um, and it is Zoom. It's not the old Google Meet address, right? No, I think it's Zoom. But let me back. Um, let me go back and see. The city clerk sent out a notice. Yeah, I, think, I, I, I'm, uh, about, Mary, I guess her name is. Yeah. Wait a minute. Sometime around two o'clock, they sent us. In. For two thirty, there was. A oh, note. oh, oh! Today yeah. again? Yes, I think so. Oh, oh! Wait a minute. Oh, city clerk's office. Here it is. Yep. On Zoom meeting. Yep. Not launch meeting. Oh, <laughs> On. I don't know why it's working. I don't know what's wrong with this case. Oh, okay, here, here it is. I'm sorry, I fell asleep. I wasn't having a great day. Okay, I don't see you coming. Well, maybe you are coming up here. Maybe, maybe. Yep, there, there you are. If you can turn your camera on and your mic on, little symbols down on the lower left. There you are. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um. Okay. Is it okay now? Yes. If you, if you want us to see you, you can turn your camera okay. on. If you don't, you can leave it off. What, please? Okay. Am I on? You are on. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Hello, everybody. We can hear you, but we can't see you. You can't see me. What am I not doing now? Uh, somewhere it says turn your camera or start or stop video. You can no. turn your camera if you want. It doesn't, doesn't matter. I, I just hit start video. No. Okay. So okay. is it better now? I uh, don't see you yet. I'm, I'm viewing Donald, Donald's screen. Yeah, that's the agenda. Okay. Well, we can, we can, we can, uh, you can hear us, right? I can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and you can see the agenda there. So we, we have approved the minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, just going backwards, number two, we're talking about um, we should probably get our next um, 
uh, get our next commission member appointed. And we were discussing uh, kind of what, what the charter was saying that we need uh, possible, um, Ellen, you still there? No, we lost her. Okay. And I think she I, hit screen share. Yes, I think so. Okay, so she's back. There's, there's Ellen. Okay. Um, maybe Ellen, get off of uh, screen share. That is, if possible. Yeah, let's change role to attendee. Okay. Oh, now we lost. Oops. Lost her again. Again. All right. I was, um, there's Ellen. There you're back. That's good. So on the, oops. Ellen, you're still there? I am, but I lost. Nope. <laughs> I lost you. Oh. You should be on panelist. But there she is. You're back again. Uh, unmute. Okay, Ellen. Okay. Yeah, you're back. Okay. Um, so we were talking about um, get, getting a seventh member appointed. Uh, we, we in, in lo losing Susan, uh, we lost an attorney, which is one of the, the categories. And um, if, if, if we, you would, you were thinking that the Lenny would be a good member on the board also. Yes. I, uh, excuse me. I, I did ask him. Um, he, he has a, a couple of sons out in the West coast who are in having serious medical conditions. And he said that he really wouldn't, wouldn't be able to commit, you know, that he, this was not a good time for him. They've just returned again from California. So um, I've been trying to think of someone else to tell you the truth. Okay, so, so maybe the two categories that we were thinking of is either somebody that is an attorney or somebody that's involved with real estate in, in the city uh, would, be, would kind of fit the criteria of who the, uh, um, the membership of the commission is supposed to kind of cover. Yes. And we could, I don't, I don't uh, know if there's a local um, chapter of realtors that we could uh, go to, or if anyone knows a, an active realtor that would be uh, good for, uh, that active in Fitchburg and knows and has a, has a slant toward preservation perhaps. Um, um, I know somebody. Um, okay. Do you know Nick Pelletier? Um, I could ask him if he's interested. He's actually building the new townhouses on um, Blossom Street, I believe. Right. Uh, right. But he also, he's a young guy and he's, he's a realtor from Pittsburgh as well. So, and he's really active in the community. So, um, he's actually helping out with the abolitionist park and all that. So I, if people are interested, I could ask him. Okay, that's that's a good that's a good name. Uh, any any other realtor names or lawyer names that uh, we might want to consider? Right. Um, consensus to have uh, Megan uh, maybe contact Nick Peltier. Good. Yeah. Right. Favor. I wonder if Keith. I wonder if we could reach out to um, to either the historical mm -hmm. society or somebody like Bill McSheehy or even the mayor um, for recommendations. Um, if I happen to see uh, the mayor, I mean, I'll certainly bring it up. Um, 
I don't have any plans to see him. Sometimes I run into him at the food store, <laughs> but um, you know, we could ask other people for suggestions that are plugged into the community. Very true. Any other thoughts? It, it is the mayor who does the appointing and we would make a recommendation um, or we could just, we could go to the mayor's office and say, we, you know, we have an opening that could be either uh, real estate or an attorney. And if we have a preference, maybe, maybe real estate is, is an important piece or an attorney that would help us with the uh, demolition delay document or something like that. Um, We'll certainly have access to the city solicitor for the demolition delay ordinance wording and things, I would think. Um, what do you, um, Megan, do you want, do you want to, a thought is, do you want to informally uh, talk with Nick and see if he's interested in it and just let me know and then I could perhaps get a hold of um, uh, contact the mayor's office and just let them know that we have a couple interested and if if let them know the two categories and let them kind of uh, um, well I don't know if we want to let them <laughs> but you know make a strong recommendation uh, for something like that. So why don't we, let's, let's, um, let's think on it for the next, next couple of weeks before we make any action on this. And we'll just uh, kind of troll around and maybe by next meeting, we'll, we'll make a decision on this of who, who we would recommend, not that we can make the uh, final appointment. So, okay. Let me call Ellen back again. I don't, is she here? Ellen, are you here? Yeah, she's okay. Me, she was muted. I'm seeing everybody on the screen here. So is there a way of seeing more more people that are show, showing up um, on the screen that I can see everybody that's here? Yeah, there's gallery view. Where is gallery view? There's a little view button up in the right left hand corner. If you yeah. click on that, you can. So how you you can click on whatever way you want to see people. Oh I can't start the video. I can hear you. No, that's good. <laughs> I can't see the gallery view, but uh, wait a minute, view. Here we go. Uh standard side by side. Upper, you know, I was going to the upper left hand side like that. Um, okay. Um, so uh, let's let's um, put some thought into the new members. Uh, any other thoughts that come along? Uh, maybe send an email out. To the group, and we will do a final discussion in our in our June meeting. Um, okay, going back to uh, Simon Saw, um, we Ellen, we, we were just talking about uh, perhaps composing a letter of our concern of uh, of perhaps uh, rather than demolition of the building that again, reconsideration of staving the building or at least portions of the building and perhaps uh, portions of the building that are along Intervale Road that are visible to the kind of to the public. It is mm -hmm. an immense building. Um, and we're thinking of, of sending this um, sooner than later. I think uh, we need to react on this soon. We're sending it to um, you know, drafting a letter, sending it to the mayor Sending it to the, uh, the head of the community development would be Tom Swarovski, oh. mm -hmm. uh, planning board, um, 
Um, I'm thinking perhaps the building commissioner also, just so that the building commissioner is in the loop. They're the ones that are going to be, you know, issuing kind of final permit and things. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just uh, you know, making our our um, our viewpoint known. Uh, so that, you know, perhaps some action can be taken on this. And, uh, um, and at least, uh, you know, for any other reason with, you know, letting, letting the other boards and commissions know that, you know, the historical quality of buildings uh, in that we were going to keep it. And then there was the quick change of kind of change, you know, slowing it down that we should have been, you know, more informed of this so we could have had more input a little bit earlier on although we did hear i guess fairly soon but it, it takes a while to get get consensus and action going i guess and maybe we should have acted more quickly over. so if it as a if you don't mind i will draft a letter and send it out to the board members or commission members for your your comments mm -hmm. and um See if we can get something out to that uh, mailing list. And well, that would be great. <laughs> the more I think about the building, the more, the more I, I mean, I, oh, excuse me. Give me a call. Excuse me. Yep. Uh, no, I, I, I think it would be a great idea to do that. Okay, and if if it's okay with the rest of you, I'll I'll draft the letter and uh, send it to everybody. See if I'll have something up by this weekend, perhaps. I Thank am you. all in favor of your drafting the letter, Keith. I I am too. Okay. Um, then feel free to make comments and additions, etc. To it. Okay. Um, so the uh, Charles said he he. he could be available in early July. And I will uh, try to keep everybody informed of if we hear when that access, I will contact the developer again. Uh, uh -huh. He was very uh, accommodating in allowing us to do this. I actually sent him the copies of the popular mechanics article and the, the 1939 architectural record uh, document so he is kind of aware of it and primed a little bit about the history history of the building. Um, I've also contacted the um, the Austin company that were the original designers of the building. Um, Austin Company is a design build firm. One of the original design build firms. It was actually kind of always been headquartered out of Cleveland, Ohio, but in uh, the nineteen 20s, they did have a Boston office also, and they actually have international practice of, of uh, buildings. And they actually got through the uh, the 20th century big depression by building buildings in Russia, I guess. So that was oh my. how they, so I've been looking at some of the Austin Company's piece. Uh, in their history on their website, they actually list the windowless factory in, in Fitchburg, Massachusetts as part of their history um, and uh, the documentation. I've yet to hear back from them on it. Uh, but when I talked with their marketing person, they said that their, their current president of the company is very much into the history of the company. Austin Company in 2002 was actually purchased by a a Japanese company, so it's part of a much bigger international company right now. Uh, so it doesn't have quite the um, focus stand authority as it might have had uh, if if it still was under its older ownership. Uh, so it's now a division of an, another larger development corporation. Uh, but it has a long history of uh, of uh, streamline, streamlining, particularly industrial design, and a lot of uh, headquarters for many large corporations and things, uh, particularly in the Cleveland area, um, or GE, et cetera, and their uh, 
their uh, electrical lighting division there. Um, so, and, and there's also one historian in um, Sarah Wormel, uh, who is an industrial architectural historian out of, I think she also faculty at BU, I believe. Um, and she has done some documentation of the um, Higgins Armory in, in Worcester. Uh, Worcester. Mm -hmm. um, I'd actually kind of helped bring her on when that building was being sold to actually write it up and then hopefully kind of strengthen. I think it's on National Register. I'm not sure where our, whereas Simons is not. But of similar type of caliber, caliber with a, a kind of a noteworthy building of uh, 19th or 20th century early architecture, industrial architecture. Um, she has mentioned she would like to do additional documentation on it. Um, particularly if it is going to be, and she would like to be there at the walkthrough if possible, and that it should have some additional documentation. Um, that's something that um, as a commission that we could back, if you will, uh, she would probably have a fee to be able to do this. Uh, I'm not sure if, um, if that's something uh, we as a commission would like to have it better documented as far as its history and archived as part of our city's history um, beyond just what we have on the in inventory uh, piece, which is fairly light. Well, um, are you asking? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I quite understand. I know I heard you say Sarah and she's at BU, I didn't, I didn't hear her last name, but she, you think she'd like to come and, and do a walkthrough and? She would like to come through a walkthrough. Uh, she might, she would, she would be a good person. Uh, she's certainly well qualified in documenting early and 20th century architecture, mm -hmm. particularly industrial architecture and technology. Um, she would probably have a fee to make it as part of her as, as a, official documentation, uh, we, we would, if we're the asker, we would need to uh, pay whatever her fee is if we approached her about it. Um, and we have no funding. Uh, it's possible we could get matching grant maybe through Mass Historical for a couple thousand dollars or something like that, an emergency grant, if, if uh, that's something we could perhaps apply for if we had some matching funds. Um, I'm not sure um, if it's something we could do a GoFundMe or something for the matching funds, or if we had any foundations or whatever in the city that would uh, find it worthy to be able to come up with some. Uh, well, I'm I'm very friendly with with um, she'd be a great grand granddaughter of of. Um, I think the original Mr. Simons, who was the president at the time, I did tell, I did let her know about um, the fact that it was going to be demolished. Um, I don't know if her if her family would be interested, but I'd be happy to call her tonight. What do you think it might cost, Keith? I I don't I don't know. Um, I think for Higgins, I'm trying to remember. It was I don't. Know, Five to ten thousand dollars, somewhere in that range. I'm mm -hmm. guessing. Um, so oh. that might be. If 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 the family would be interested in that, that would and and if there is some support, you think financially from them or. Um, I'm not quite sure how to. Well, I, I, I'll be very direct with, with um, Annie. I mean, we're very good. You know, we, we don't see each other very often anymore, but I, I'll be very direct with her. In the meantime, um, we could also, and I'd be glad to do this too, call Tom and, uh, and ask him, if, you know, if he has any 
funds and you know and connected to the community development office. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'm hoping to talk with Tom soon. He he owes me a phone call. I mean, I okay. could maybe ask that also since we're maybe. Why don't you let me? ask him that question okay and i'll get in touch with annie I'll, I'll try to reach her after after the meeting okay and i i will get in if if it's okay with everybody i will contact sarah and see if she could give us a, an idea of, of what she thought would be um you know, what what an output and if there would be in a report she hasn't volunteered for this so i can just approach her about it uh, mm -hmm. she, she mentioned that it's not very well documented. Um, and it, in her viewpoint, she's, she's, she's visited the exterior of the building many times years past, and I've actually heard her talk about it in past uh, reference. So uh, I will ask her also in, in the meantime to get her opinion and see if what she thought a, a, uh, a fee would be for something like that and if she was interested in doing it. Okay. Has anybody talked with the city about the status of the project? Do we know? Um, only that they they are. Wait, I talked with the developer themselves. I got the, the name from, I believe, the building commissioner, and uh, they're actually the developer are going to be leasing it to Amazon. Um, they're the ones that saying it's in, it's in asbestos removal state right now. So the building is pretty well sealed up except for asbestos removal that's ongoing supposedly right now. And they hope to finish that by, by roughly uh, July 4th or the first week in, in July is their scheduled uh, demolition completion on that. Um, so that's, um, they are in process. Uh, Megan has said that planning board has given them initial approval for their site plan um, to go ahead with their, their removal and putting in a smaller building footprint. Uh, I did talk with uh, Peter Capadaglia who said that they are, they do, they are coming back before the board with uh, supposedly new documents um, so I could, I'm, I'm not sure exactly, uh, what that is. I'm not sure if the building commissioner would like to speak with the, uh, uh, perhaps the chair of the, of the planning board on that too. Or maybe, uh, I suppose Michael is, is their main, Mike, Michael Harris is our main administrative person, he probably knows what the status is, what other things that need to be done. So maybe Michael would be the best person to ask on that. So I will I'll call Michael on that also, just so we're um, making a note here. Um, what, what additional permits and approvals and things they may or may not need to go ahead on this. Okay, any other, so we have several action items that we're going to look into a draft, drafting a letter uh, to the mayor, et cetera, talking about our recommendations and our concerned removal. Uh, Ellen's going to be talking with the granddaughter about possible, um, possible funding, but first let me talk with Sarah first and I'll see if I can get an idea of what, what the cost is before we approach somebody without any real numbers on it and some idea of what this is. So let me do that first, Ellen, before you contact. And I also will contact uh, Mike on the... You, you, you want me to wait, Keith? Yeah, let me talk with Mike first and, and to Sarah and see if I can get some actual dollar. Okay, amount. okay, all right. So and I, I'll, I'll wait to hear from you. Okay, um, I'm just trying to get a logical order of things here, so. Um, any other thoughts on Simons? 
before we go to the next item. Okay, um, update on the proposed demolition delay ordinance. I haven't had time to work on it. I've been writing some grants that are due next week. And after that, I can start working on it. Okay. So any, any specifics on uh, what we think would be number of years for a qualifying building and time, time period for the actual delay period? Those, those will certainly be kind of up for discussion, but we're talking 50 years, we're talking a one year delay. Um, I thought we agreed to uh, 50 years. Um, okay. Along, like at my first meeting, uh, back in February, I believe. Thank you. Yes. Okay. But the years, I know you, you sent me um, some interesting discussion on the uh, mass history, uh, what is it called? Listserv about some towns are, one town has like a two year delay or something like that. And, yeah, I can't remember exactly what that was, but there's a lot of towns and cities out there and and uh, that have um, good model bylaws. And I think MHC, when we were doing this the last time, had a model, model kind of bylaw that they kind of rec recommend as a starter. Uh, that was a while ago. I don't know if they've updated that or not. That would have been uh, Chris. Uh, Skelly did that, and I noticed that Michael Steinertz, um, Steinertz um, was listed on the uh, kind of keeper of the list serve now. So I don't know if it's been passed over to Michael, um, but we could um, see if there is any updated uh, Mass Historical Commission things where if they've done any updates on their on their um, kind of recommended draft to start with any okay any other comments on demo delay okay um one of the things that they've the mass historical commission has recommended is they say that most demolition delay bylaws in Massachusetts are for six months, but they recommend 12 months because that's far more effective than six months. Yeah, and I think, you know, I think that's kind of probably what we're heading for in our draft. And, um, the thing that Megan mentioned, Megan mentioned was that the, the one, I think it was Southbridge has that there was a clause in it saying they have to diligently be advertising the, the property for sale as is and, and you know, not torn down for one full year and they have to show evidence of uh, multiple listing uh, at its fair market value. Uh, to show that they've made a, uh, besides looking at alternatives that they're actually, they actually have to put it up for sale to a, a buyer that would, that would buy the building as is and uh, obviously not tear it down. So having a piece in it like Southbridge, I think it was in it, this seems like a, a, a uh, adding a little bit more teeth that they're just, well, we can wait 12 months and then we'll do whatever we want with it. There has to be an effort that they could possibly lose the building if somebody actually offered them the fair market value on the property. Um, so it's, it's kind of an additional incentive uh, to, uh, that could be added to it and, and to uh, uh, educate our our uh, city city council members on the uh, 
the importance of uh, uh, having this ordinance in the city. So once we have it, I think there's going to be an education period that will go through. So we should be thinking about how we want to be doing that as we're you know, finishing up the draft. So. Okay, uh, moving on to the historic districts information brochure. Um, I have been in uh, second contact with the Fitchburg State faculty people. Um, they are, I haven't heard back from them and since my second contact. It did sound favorable that we should have something started up in the fall for that. Um, I will continue to follow through on that, uh, making sure they have my new email address. And um, so uh, unless there's any other things there, we'll just keep that on the... Yeah, on the well, agenda. Ellen and I have been in uh, contact about this and um, we have a division of uh, responsibilities, responsibilities. <laughs> yes, um, in, in using the Salem uh, brochure as a model in which um, it has a description of the, the history of the Salem Historical Commission. Mm. Um, I asked Ellen if she could write up a history of the Fitchburg Historical Commission because she was there at the inception. That's what I'm doing. And um, I wrote up, uh, which I think I sent out to everyone. Yes, you did. Uh, the, what I gleaned off the macros list about the uh, uh, about historic districts in Pittsburgh, uh, which I, I will probably have to be cut down and will have to be abridged. Uh, but I figured I'd put in more information uh, rather than less, because uh, then we could decide what we want to take out. Um, so that's where we are at the moment. Okay. I, and I'm, per, I, I'm, I'm excited about that. I mean, I, we could, I, I was thinking maybe over the summer, Dawn could, um, you know, maybe get together and look at each one of the, the districts, uh, the wording, you know, and, and see what are, are you, you, you've sent me your, all, all that you've done. So, you know, I, I haven't been able to, to, to look at it in, in detail, but um, I could, we could count, count the number of words on the on the Salem mm -hmm. um, brochure, okay. Uh, but also, uh, if collectively we would be thinking of appropriate pictures of the districts. Yeah, I included some pictures, but they may not be entirely appropriate. Um, oh, I don't. I did. Did you do? Is that recently? No, that's in the. That's in what I sent you. So. Oh, okay. All right, I'll look for that. Okay, excellent. And I, I could, um, in the meantime, I could uh, uh, look at, get better pictures maybe of the, uh, of each of the uh, historic districts. There, there probably are, or we could ask Charles to take a picture also, um, you know, the Salem, the Salem brochure has, you know, a column of some, I don't know which building, but I wondered if our logo, you know, our, our logo is very attractive, if that could be on the cover. Sure, could be. All right. Okay. All right, um, update on the old courthouse and preservation strategy. Um, uh, Keith, before we move on to that, I, I'm sorry, I'm working and I wasn't able to respond. Yeah, Don, Don or, or Ellen, if you want a picture of a district or something, just reach out to me. I have some time over the summer. Okay. Before okay, I get great, busy. Charles. Thanks. All right, but I got to put put you back on mute, okay? Okay. okay. All right, bye. Yep. You're doing double duty. Good. Thank you, Charles. Yeah. Good. 
uh, old courthouse and preservation strategy. I was going to follow up with Mass Historical on um, perhaps uh, deeded restrictions things, and I have yet to do that. So that's if we shall leave that still on the agenda. Any other comments on that or knowledge? Megan, has there been any other action on the part of the city? I haven't heard anything. Say pardon? I haven't heard anything. Uh huh. Um, yeah, I've been out of that conversation for a while. So. Uh huh. I've, in my conversation that I'm supposed to be having with Tom Swierowski, I'll ask him on that just to see if he has any updates on it too. Okay. Um, Okay, number seven, update on the status of Monument Park. Um, Ellen has uh, gotten the specifications uh, mm -hmm. from Lenny Lasco. Um, and Lenny has resent those. He had sent them to me and I'd lost them. Mm -hmm. This was two years ago or a year or so ago. And that's my bad. I was going to be reviewing them and I, I misplaced them and lost them. So we have them Did you back. get the new one? Yes, I did oh, get okay. them. And I will um, definitely take a look at those and get back to uh, both you and Lenny on this. Um, he did a good job on it. And I believe that, um, I believe that um, Ellen, you said in uh, one of one of the question was is to find someone who could do cast iron mm -hmm. uh, and kind of replicating cast iron. Um, you were going to contact Mass Historical on that. Perhaps? Yes, I haven't done that. That's on my list, but I, I, I am going to do that. Lenny, Lenny explained to me what I need to ask. OK, what the, the purpose in calling them would be to find a they know any companies that have already done this, you know, with other, with other communities. Cause Lenny yes. thinks it's not, it, you know, it is, it isn't something that a lot of um, companies would be involved in. It, it, it's a certain art. Right. And that's something that uh, maybe let us know what you hear from mass historical. I will. And it's something we could put out on the list, the Mass Historical list serve also um, to the community that that uh, reads those pieces. Oh, uh, OK. And we could ask them if there's any um, any cast iron preservation, cast iron mm -hmm. companies that are known also. Um, and then we could kind of go th go to them informally to find get some uh, estimates of what the cost of this might be before mm -hmm. we do a formal going out to bid or actually do a formal going out to bid. Okay. Um, Preservation Worcester on their website has a list of artisans and, and skilled uh, people in specific historic preservation. Uh, repair and building uh, methods. So you can also check on there. What is, where is that, Megan? Preservation Worcester has it on their webpage a list of people that do- Worcester Historical Commission? No, Preservation Worcester. Oh, Preservate, I'm, I'm sorry. Yep, and they can, uh, they, there might be somebody on that list. Okay, I'll, in the region, so. I'll check that. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Um, Keith, can you hear me? It's Charles. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, could uh, so what do they send you exactly when you say specs? What does that mean? Like, um, like it is. It's it's um, the beginnings of a bid document uh, that can be sent out to basically the contractor that would actually be doing the work for them to bid on it. So it, it has uh, it has kind of a 
the specifications of what the wrought iron is to be, the location of where the missing pieces are, and kind of the scope of work and the quality of work that's required to do the, you know, the repair of the whole project start to finish. Um, so Lenny has a kind of a, a site plan of the showing the boundary with the railing portions and the areas on it that need repair. Um, and then the specifications are um, the, the standards for the quality of work, the type of cast iron that needs to be replaced on it, how they're installed, uh, if they painted or not, what the type of paint to be going into it, and how they're fastened to the existing railing system, et cetera. Uh, so that's what a specification is. Is that something that? Is that something that you could forward to me just for my own, just for my own um, interest? I just find it fascinating. <laughs> so for some reason, I don't, if you told me this 30 years ago that I'd be interested in this, I would have said, shoot me when I get to that age that this is interesting. But for some reason, I just love it. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll send it to everybody. So everybody has a chance to look at it. And um, yeah, that's, that's great. Thanks for asking for that. That's so everybody. And, and then also my other my other question would just be is um so where where would 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 we be like having to uh ask the city for money do we have to put it out for bids no. first or i mean get estimates and then ask the city or do we ask the well, city first I, how does that work I, I think what um what lenny was uh, saying is that if we can if we can find uh one or two of these companies and let them kind of quickly review it ahead of time to get kind of a ballpark idea of what the, the budget of it is. Uh, then we could kind of go back before we actually do the, go out to uh, one or more, obviously several bidders if we can, uh, uh -huh. that, we, that we know that we're, we need, you know, roughly, you know, $200,000 or $500,000 or whatever it is, um, uh, the cost is going to be so we're in the general ballpark, so we don't have to go out and rebid it and only do half of it or something like that. Well, I, I think I um, mentioned that I, 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 I think probably I was talking to Megan, but um, I think it would be a good idea if maybe not for the next meeting, but for a meeting pretty soon that we should invite whoever the director of the Parks and Recreation Department is to let them yes. know that we're interested in this. This is, it is Nate LaRose. Oh, uh, Nate. Oh, yeah. he, well, he'd be wonderful to invite. Yeah. And I just happened to talk with him about a week ago. Oh, good. And uh, he was saying that um, he, he was kind of surprised that we were interested in Monument Park. He said he actually put in a budget uh, for railing repair. Uh, he put in some money in, in his budget to the city for that. And I said, well, we'd be very interested in doing it. He, he was actually going to replace it, I believe. And I said, no, 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 I don't want to replace the railing, um, that we want to repair it. So, uh, but he, he, is, he has a budget item for this already. So oh. you're you're indeed correct that we do need to coordinate with them. Uh, they would be probably the funder uh, or at least part of the funding for it. And we definitely need to coordinate this with them and uh, perhaps remind them also that it is a historic district and that the, the, uh, our role as the local historic district commission uh, for this particular uh, project. Uh, well, why, uh, I'd be very happy to um, have a reason to call Nate, and could I ask him to tune into our next meeting if we aren't meeting virtually? I mean, if we aren't meeting in person. Um, we hopefully we will be meeting in person in July. Uh, I might be coming in remotely. I don't know if mm -hmm. I'll be making it back there. So I think it'll be kind of a hybrid. Some people there and some people not. But uh, Nate, Nate could be there too. Let's let's find out what we find out um, budget-wise 
Right. And I'll send this all out before we invite Nate. Okay. Just so that we have uh, a little bit more information. Um, and then, and then Keith, I guess just for the sake of keeping things rolling, I guess we'll just kind of maybe leave the base of the monument itself as a separate thing so that we don't slow anything down. Oh. Or do you think it'd be better, or do you think it'd be better to tackle it all? At once? I would go one at a time. Yeah. One, one at a time. Good comment. So, yes, yep. let's keep that in, in the back. Let's not overlook that or forget about it, but let's try to do this one thing at the moment and then uh, tackle the base. You know, uh, this the subject of the city being in tune with um, the historic districts. I've, I've been thinking about this. You know, we had a lovely program, um, you know, at, at, at uh, the library and we invited everybody in the city to let them know that, that Monument Park is an historic district and so forth. Um, I've just been in my own mind trying to think of how we better educate them. Does anybody have any thoughts? Um, well, I think the brochure is going to be helping. Mm -hmm. um, I think they we're doing some things that way. That'll, that'll certainly help. I know Susan Navarre is having, a, a, she does a series on FATV of different happenings historic wise, maybe we could ask her to have that as part of one of our shows. Sure. I can do that. I can ask her. You're talking about speaking to, to Sue? Yes. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Hi. Um, so it sounds to me like our timing was very good uh, with with how we moved forward with the railings. Um, it sounds like we got we got uh, got in what we needed to get just in time before the city made a mistake and uh, replaced them without. Oh my to god. Us. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe, maybe when we're on the subject with Nate, we can remind him about the park benches Hello. that they never replaced that they promised I'm to in replace. A right now. Right. Um, not that I care about that as much, you know, I'm happy with the railings. I'm taking minutes. Love you, bye. Good. But, uh, yeah, I, 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 sorry. It's just good timing. That's all. I think. Exactly. Um, and, and maybe we can have Nate for the next meeting. It, you know, sooner is better probably for, uh, you want Nate. me to invite him? Um, sure. I don't know. Okay. Sure. And, and you know, even if he can't make it, you know, at least maybe you just let him know what we're talking about so that he's kind of on the same page. Sure. You know, and he could always come to the next one. Keith, are you away in Block Island this summer? Uh, yes. Oh, I, th I think June and, June and July, I'm going to be remote. I'm going to be there for August, I'm pretty sure. Did you go last year during the pandemic? No, this is... Uh, so this is where we are right now. <laughs> oh, you're in Block Island now? Yep. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, I heard that commercial not too long ago, and I thought of you <laughs> for the ferry. <laughs> so. We shouldn't be advertising it. We don't want people to know about it. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too, many, too many McMansions being built across the street from us and stuff now. So this is... Uh, Everybody's trying to get out of the city. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Well, I'm glad about the news about the uh, the railings, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the uh, the email that you forward with that uh, information. Good. And uh, good. good, I think we're we're going to make some progress on this finally. So, I remember when they fixed the railings last time. It must have been what the early 2000s, and I remember it wasn't cheap. I remember right. it was like like over a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> so, well, so. Nothing, <clears throat> nothing is under that. That's for sure. Yeah, but that's exciting. Uh, it's something that besides City Hall, that's something I've had my heart on, heart in, you know, in for a long time. It's that in the uh, courthouse. Yep, let's keep it up. That's good. Yeah, good. Uh, anything else on Monument Park? I think we have some action plans on that this mm -hmm. month. 
um, update on the Twin City Rail Trail, coordination with signage and other matters. Um, again, uh, I, I was going to talk with Tom Swarovski on this. He had been at some meetings. Uh, I haven't been able to talk with him yet to find out what's up with this. I think it's, it's going in phases. We're doing some of the metal stuff first. Um, I drove by the old train station in Lemonster. They, they've done very little around that end of it. So they seem to be working on the middle parts of the trail at the moment. So uh, I've talked to two, excuse me, two, two members of the committee. And um, the, it appears that, you know, the state has been involved to some extent, but now they are, they're still involved, but this is not a prior, this project is not a priority at the present time. I think that's the easiest way I can explain it. Mm. So um, they're, they're um, you know, not at a point where they, they're even talking about signage, but that wouldn't prevent us from thinking about what we would like the sign, what we would like the signage to include. Also, Ellen, it's my understanding from just the posts that I see on Facebook pertaining to the trail um, um, that the that I don't even think that the two the two ends of the trail were have even been approved. Uh, it's just that main center part. They have they haven't, Charles. Yeah, like, so they have to yeah. figure out. They have to make a determination. Although I guess they've got a suggested idea yeah. of how they're going to bridge, you know, from Railroad Street to Sawyer Passway. And I mean, it's, they're talking about all these things, but they haven't really uh, defined them so that they'll, there's a, you know, like a, even a, a draft design. Of yeah, well, we, just, just, just from what I'm piecing together from what I read on the, their Facebook page, it just seems like we'll oh, probably get that main, the, we'll get that main center part of the trail. And then probably the two ends will probably linger for a few years before anything happens with that. That's just kind of what I'm, uh, just what it's what it sounds like. There, there, there are places along the trail in Fitchburg that you can see where they're working already. And of course the, the bridge um, abutments on, on either side of route two are, are finished, but um, it's, a, it's gonna be a while. Yep. Yeah. I, I saw they were doing some, uh, they, they'd done the, the walkway down near where the Halloween store is, or whatever. yes, yes, that's. I was down there with with these two friends last week. Yeah, you they can were see showing me getting grass and stuff on the mm -hmm. the, edge, the ed edges of it, etc. So it was good to see that progress. Uh, so we'll, we'll let's keep this on the agenda. And mm -hmm. again, I want to um, when I talk with. Tom on this, <clears throat> just let him just reinforce that uh, we are very interested in making sure the heritage of the city is, is uh, highlighted, particularly along the way, the patch, uh, perhaps the, uh, the rail station on near Bemis Road, mm -hmm. uh, that old Victorian, which is a house now with lots of trash in it, uh, <laughs> around it. And uh, particularly the terminus in Fitchburg, if we can really push to have a, uh, a good welcoming uh, starting and ending point for the trail and being able to just kind of help celebrate the heritage of the city for people mm -hmm. using this. So, uh, you know, from our commission standpoint. So we'll continue, let's keep it on uh, the, the agenda and uh, we'll try to update ourselves on those as we go. Any other comments on the rail trail? Uh, number nine, the, our website, um, we're changing, we have changed to Zoom. Uh, I believe this, uh, this is all done through FA TV that uh, I believe must be contracted with the city to, to handle these. Uh, talking with uh, people at City Hall, particularly uh, the city clerk is uh, looking to schedule uh, more of the um, commissions and board meetings and things so that they can be uh, 
attended by the public. Uh, this was a little bit early getting our meeting as a, as a actually in city hall or in one of the city hall facilities uh, for this meeting, but they're, they're thinking that perhaps for the June meeting, it can be, uh, can be a live meeting mm -hmm. in one of the meeting rooms. Uh, there's, there's a very large meeting room on the third floor, I believe. Uh, that has a big white screen in it and still have social distancing uh, for our small commission and many guests. Um, or perhaps the council chamber. Uh, and some of these rooms have connection, uh, obviously, to Zoom and uh, perhaps even FATV. Uh, one of the goals talking with Nate at FATV is one of their goals is to have as many of the public meetings uh, accessible through FATV also. Um, so this is um, kind of where we're headed um, and allowing, and, and it could be certainly, you know, the public access to the things we discuss every meeting that kind of not heard, this kind of gives a good platform for what the commission is doing, uh, the concerns of the city and, and allowing uh, the citizens of the, the city to be knowledgeable of it and to be able to help support and give guidance uh, to the commission as we're kind of going forward. So uh, we'll see where it goes, uh, but I'll keep you posted on what's happening for the June meeting. Uh, I will be uh, connecting remotely, but hopefully as many of you as possible can be uh, in person if that's uh, what they can set up for it. And if, from what I saw, there are two meeting rooms. It's just as you come into City Hall on the left and right. And I think they have some big uh, TV screens in those also for small meetings. And there is a big meeting room up on the third floor and obviously the city council chamber uh, in the bank building or previous bank building, the legislative building, I believe it's called, right? Um, so, um, Uh, next item, sponsoring a Stonewall Ordinance. Um, and Don, maybe you could talk on, on this. Yes, the, um, I went, attended the uh, talk uh, sponsored by the Fitch, Fitchburg Public Library, talk given by Robert M. Thorson, who is uh, a uh, geologist, and uh, expert on New England stone walls. And it was really enlightening uh, because uh, among the things he said, the uh, stone walls are a characteristic identifier of New England. You don't find stone walls like that um, anywhere else. And he explained why the geology of New England uh, creates a certain kind of uh, rock um, that is in the soil, but then surfaces during the course of the seasons. Um, those uh, stones are then placed, uh, uh, taken out and placed to the side, usually on the boundaries of uh, a farmer's property. And most of the stone walls that we know of, or that we see, um, are from the mid 19th century. Um, and they, most of them are in the woods. <laughs> At the time, they were not woods, they were um, just pasture land you know, for sheep and, and cattle and so forth. Um, but the, um, the, the woods have grown back. So a lot of them are hidden and people uh, are not aware of the historic significance of these walls. And the, um, 
they often see it as a way of plundering, the, plunder the stone walls for stones or other purposes. Um, so uh, he estimated that um, about half of the stone walls um, have already been lost, half of the stone walls in New England. And certain towns do have stone, specific stone wall ordinances. Now I checked Fitchburg, they do mention stone walls as part of another ordinance, ordinance but there's no definition of what constitutes a stone wall. Um, so the idea of a stone wall ordinance would be to define a stone wall of historic significance. Um, and like the demolition delay ordinance, if someone is planning to dismantle the stone wall or uh, sell the, the stones for other purposes that they, we explore if there are other options, uh, put in a delay to, to explore uh, other options because at the rate we are going, um, we, <laughs> we could well lose uh, most of the rest of the stone walls in New England uh, unless we take action. Um, and the, the, the final point that I wanted to make is that most of Fitchburg is woodland and farmland. Um, it's, it's a large city, uh, territory wise, uh, but it's not just the downtown uh, area. It's not just the urban area. In fact, no. the urban area is only a small percentage of Fitchburg. Um, and those stone walls are out there. <laughs> I, see, I see one all the time when on one side of Rollstone Road as you get closer to Route 2. That's right. One comes hiking in the woods, one ac comes across them all the time. And uh, unless there's some attention uh, raised, <laughs> attention raising, uh, education raising, consciousness raising, um, you know, the, 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 uh, we won't have them anymore uh, at some point. So that's, that's the purpose. This is why I put it on the agenda. Do you, do you know of um, any communities around here that have, have a Stonewall uh, ordinance? I, yeah, I think, oh, now is it, is it uh, Lunenburg? I can check on that. Yeah. But um, Robert uh, Thorson was, during his talk, ex expressed his interest in helping um, to, uh, um, you know, he said, to go educate. out there and get that Stonewall ordinance in your town. And he's interested in doing what he can to help out. So he's a resource uh, for us. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll get the, I'll have my daughter pick up a copy of, of the ordinance and I'll call you, Don. Okay, great. And we can talk about that and talk about the uh, what the other project that we're involved in together. Sounds good. Okay. Don, do you think uh, uh, Robert Thorson would would have a a draft or a a like like we're talking for the demo delay? Does he have an ordinance that um, he, he would might? Recommend? Yeah, he might. Um, um, my own action item, have Donna Strowski contact Robert Thorson and see if he has one. Okay. How do you spell his last name? T-H-O-R-S-O-N. Robert Thorson, okay. Yeah, uh, he's written a book called Exploring Stone Walls, A Field Guide to New England Stone Walls. He's written uh, actually a children's book called Stonewall Secrets. Uh, along with his wife and uh, explaining, it's a grandfather explaining to his grandson um, how uh, the, the stone of the stone was created and then how the walls were created from the stone. Uh, one, one thing you might ask him about, maybe something we might want to consider in an ordinance like this, and there's, there are uh, there's evidence of Native American uh, yes. stone formations oh. also. Um, and um, 
thinking about including something like those also, not just the stone walls, but it could include uh, archaeological things like that, that obviously they, there should be some, uh, some uh, second thought, like a demolition delay or whatever it is, right. for people, uh, alternatives to just plowing them over or, you know, they, they, there's a lot of significance and I've heard there are several things like that in Fitchburg. It, it's something that people don't want people to know about. Uh, and there's concern of, you know, we can't do, you know, you're restricting my land type of thing. It, maybe the stone walls would be very similar to that. But being able to be inclusive of beyond just our, our European heritage of building stone walls, there's certainly indigenous uh, people. Uh, they weren't the only ones building stone formations. Uh, well, that's exactly right. And, and you know, the, uh, the European colonists of whom we've inherited <laughs> their, their, what they did um, basically uh, push the Indians off their land. So if there's anything we can do to um, you know, restore that heritage, um, I, I think from just from a historical point of view, um, to let people know that this, you know, the, Euro the Europeans were not the first ones here. <laughs> um, and th there was quite uh, a sophisticated culture uh, going on um, that, uh, again, the, 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 uh, the tendency was not to talk about it, not to let people know about it. There was recently a, a uh, politician, former, was he a senator, who said that the, the Indians had no culture or something like this, something stupid, ignorant, oh I mean, not stupid, just ignorant. Um, and and they, they had a, quite a complex culture. Um, and if, if we can pre act to preserve some of that uh, for future generations, I, I think future generations would appreciate it. Well, I just want to let you know that I, you know where I live, and I just have a feeling that Indians lived here before. <laughs> I think about this once in a while, and as as you were talking, I mean, I I know the semblance of the stone wall on on the other side of Rollstone Road out near Route Two, but you know, if somebody, I I wouldn't be able to go um, searching around here. I don't have the uh, ability to walk like that anymore, but it would be interesting. There's still a lot of um, land between uh, Rollstone Road and Oak Hill Road <clears throat> that might, um, you know, that isn't disturbed, that might have remnants of something like that. Yeah, quite possibly. Maybe ask Robert if he, you know, his thoughts on that also. He, he, he must be have some, and, and I'm sure there's others that we could, if, if we're doing the stone wall, maybe we may become kind of more, more encompassing, or maybe we do it as separate ordinances. Uh, this is something we could include probably the planning board with, I believe the planning board is probably sponsors new, it would be something like a zoning ordinance, I believe, or a restriction, something that um, perhaps the enforcement would be from the building department. Yeah, building department, the building commissioner, zoning enforcement uh, persons that would have to uh, you know, regulate or not regulate, but enforce, I guess, that's just one word. Of, uh, um, you know, this awareness of, you know, there, it, it's like taking buildings down, you know, what, you know, what it, it's like, are there alternatives to removing stone walls or just pilfering them or making a development that respects the, uh, the uh, cultural uh, construction heritage, if you will, uh, 
of the land. All right. Any other discussion on Stonewall? And maybe we'll have some uh, direction at the next meeting on that. So. Um, any new business? All right, we have lots to do. Uh, next meeting is June 24th, um, three o'clock Thursday, last Thursday. And I will let you know any changes in format. Uh, if there is in person where it's going to be and kind of any guidance as we are uh, kind of coming out of pandemic mode. So we'll see how it, how it works. Okay. And thank you all for your patience waiting for me. Nope. Nope. That's your nope. contribution to the geriatri geriatrics today. <laughs> we're, we're all there. <laughs> um, okay, lots, lots of work to do. Um, if, if we can, as a reminder, if we can get minutes out a little bit earlier to kind of remind us things that we're supposed to do in case we forgot, like I do. Um, we have a lot of things to do. So uh, it's exciting. I think we're getting some good stuff done. So um, we will uh, I'll, I'll mail out some things as I get them and I'll send that out to Charles or everybody on the, uh, the railing so everybody can see the draft documents. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and also, you'll, you'll let me know when I can speak to the Simonses. Yes, I'll get that draft letter and also try to talk with Tom. Um, okay. It's more information. So good. And if you haven't heard from me on any of these things or from each other, uh, feel free to bug, bug us saying what's happened with this. <laughs> and we'll, uh, things like the brochure, et cetera. Uh, there's several things that I'm supposed to be following up on and I will try to... Uh, well, Don and I, Don and I will get together about about that. Okay, and I'll just, I just want to make sure that the the school is set up for the fall on that. So that's what I'll try to uh, follow up on. Okay, good. Lots of stuff. Good to see everybody. Thanks, Keith. Thank you. All right. Hello, everybody. Bye. 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 <laughs>